Hello and welcome. I'm Silvia Pavoni, economics editor of The Banker and editor of Sustainable Views, a newsletter by FT Specialist, a division of the Financial Times, which aims to help bring clarity and drive the international debate on environmental, social and governance principles. Today I have the pleasure of talking to Sir Ronald Cohen, chairman of the Global Steering Group for Impact Investments, and Bill Winters, CEO of Standard Chartered and chairman of the newly created Task Force on Scaling Voluntary Carbon Markets. Welcome to both. The first question I would like to ask is um, around uh, the increased commitments that uh, I think everyone has seen uh, after COVID-19 in terms of transitioning to a low carbon economy and a just economy. Is action following suit as well, and can it, given the urgency in supporting uh, economic growth, and perhaps this might lead to um, maybe better uh, known traditional uh, ways of uh, um, uh, moving with the economic production that may result in uh, perhaps less just and higher polluting solutions? I think one of our problems with uh, trying to control uh, climate is that we have focused on governmental action, which is absolutely necessary. But at the end of the day, it is business that are creating the pollution. And I'm a, a very big proponent uh, of the task force that Bill is chairing and the regulation that uh, the EU is, is pushing uh, through and all of Mark Carney's um, uh, efforts in, in this field. But I'm in favor of going a step beyond that to impact accounting that shows the environmental damage that companies are causing. And just a few weeks ago, uh, a project I'm involved with at Harvard Business School published open source uh, the environmental damage costed of 1,800 companies. And when you begin to have transparency on this, you begin to discover some really uh, extraordinary things, uh, like 15% uh, of the 1,800 companies, more than 250 companies, actually deliver more environmental damage than they do profit in a year. And so I don't know what Bill thinks about it, but I think we need to unite the effort on, on, on reporting and on creating a voluntary carbon markets with an effort to achieve transparency on the environmental and social uh, impact that companies create, which technology today enables us to do. The efforts that you're talking about are perfectly complementary. So uh, we, what I feel very, very strongly, and we've got 40, I think, world-class companies who are participating in this, in this task force uh, with me and, uh, and others. Uh, from the, the, the people who are, who, who are creating greenhouse gas emissions, people who are able to sink them, and, and all the intermediate, intermediaries uh, along the way. And uh, one thing that we all have in common is, is to, to, have, uh, a, a, to, to, to be able to honor the commitments that we've made uh, to get to a carbon neutral economy, uh, to, to meet the, the substantial reductions that we'll need to undertake to, to, keep, climate, uh, to, to keep temperature uh, increases below 1.5 degrees. And that... Uh, it, it, it will be possible, uh, you could imagine it being possible with, with the set of government actions, but in, unless we harness the power of business, uh, as you say, these, we, are the, the, we are the polluters or we're financing the polluters or we're, we're servicing the polluters one way or the other. Uh, and unless, uh, unless business is behind this, it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and as we've seen over the past 20 years, we've just not made the progress that we need to make. Uh, so the, the establishment of a, of a very, very clear uh, and, and robust market uh, for well, like us uh, and others, to go in and say, yeah, I can do a lot of things myself, and I will, uh, but I want to be able to buy some credits as well so that I can effectively finance other people uh, who are uh, making the, uh, the investments that are necessary to, to hit these targets that we set. That the transparency is, is a prerequisite for this working. And uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that, that, that uh, Mark Carney was, uh, was, was uh, very focused on the, on the transparency agenda through his work at the, the FSB, and is now very focused on the the, uh, the carbon offset market uh, through his work with COP26. I and mean, I think these things go hand in hand. The task force uh, that has been uh, newly created that you're chairing, Bill, um, um, really centers around voluntary uh, markets, so voluntary commitments. While Ronnie, I believe, is also um, 
calling for for mandatory for impositions on on corporates to disclose the the environmental and social impact of the activity uh, as part of uh, the corporate financial statements. So, so yes, you're saying that these two forces are complementary, but are, are they really? Should we not perhaps focus more on the mandatory elements of uh, these, all these efforts? I think market mechanisms take a very long time uh, to make their way through to, you know, to a real tipping point. And uh, we've had uh, four decades now of environmental effort top down. Um, I think we've reached a, a historic crossroad similar to 1929. In 29, after the great crash, investors sat up and realized that they had been investing in companies without understanding their true profitability, without transparency on profit. And at the time, uh, people argued that if you introduce gap accounting and auditors, it would be the end of American capitalism. And of course, we all know uh, that uh, our, our banking system, our, our big investment uh, uh, market, depend on having reliable accounting and transparency on profit. With $30 trillion plus of ESG and impact investment today going to achieve impact as well as profit and zero transparency on it, I believe that investors and consumers and employees and even government have the right to know what impact companies are delivering. And if governments can come to mandate it that uh, three years uh, from now, two years from now they would start, three years from now they would publish, or companies would publish impact-weighted accounts, the approach and the technology exists for us to do that and we would begin to see companies get their impact into shape basically now because they won't want to be exposed very negatively uh, as the data set that Harvard Business School is, is, is doing um, uh, about all the, the negative uh, impacts that uh, they're creating. Wouldn't this make the efforts of the task force easier because uh then there, there will definitely be a greater degree of transparency. So uh, trading uh, carbon emissions will, by, as a consequence, become much more fluid. I think these things are perfectly complementary and, and one flows from the other. So the, I mean, where does this begin? The, 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 the corporate uh, universe has accepted, I think, for a number of really good reasons, that we need to make very strong commitments and lead this fight against uh, something that, that has extremely adverse consequences uh, should we fail to act. But so there, there are very few companies out there that haven't made environmental commitments at this point. Now we could, we could argue some are more genuine or less genuine, or some are more aggressive or less aggressive, but I, I, I would make a bet uh, that this is only going to gather steam as the owners of these companies uh, insist on changes and as the employees of these companies insist on changes. Um, so that you start with with with, with the problem. Uh, next is uh, the, the 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 transparency to actually measure whether people whether the commitments that we're all making are actually being acted on. You know, are we actually having the reduction in the impact that will translate through to a lower increase in in the in global uh, temperatures than would otherwise be the case? And then third, uh, and then there will be lots of of threes, right? There will be lots of other things along the way. Is They've got to have each of these companies has to have a means to deal with the commitments that they made measured uh, properly. And one of those means, uh, clearly, to my mind, is to have a, a market uh, that allows the, the business community as a whole to exchange value between them so that the right financing is getting to the right place to make the right uh, impact as, as Ronnie sets out. And I, I, I'm a fundamental believer in the, in, the, in the value of markets. There are alternatives to markets that can be mandated. Right? You could have government uh, limits, quotas, and the government can sit uh, you know, like the Soviet Union did for 70 years or so and allocate uh, carbon quotas to all the different participants in, participants in the market and ratchet them down. And then there could be very severe penalties, including jail for, for people that don't honor their commitments. Uh, I think that the markets are much likely, much more likely to be effective faster. Uh, but, but to Ronnie's point, if we don't have the, the underlying transparency, you can't measure whether people are actually taking the steps and making the investments to honor the commitments that we've made. Would you be happy for Standard Charter to start reporting at, or to, to be mandated in terms of reporting? We get very high marks for the, the transparency of our disclosures. I think we're recognized as, I mean, I guess everybody says best in class. I'll say we're best in class. 
in terms of disclosures. Uh, we got some good feedback from, from, uh, from NGOs and, and regulators around how we could be even better. So next year's disclosures that they come out with our 2020 uh, earnings uh, will be even better. Uh, we intend to be at the leading edge of, of transparency. Uh, and uh, and you know, of course, it's not that trend. It's not that straightforward. There, there, there are some, some basic tools that are missing. You know, what, is the, what is the impact of a loan that Standard Chartered makes to an airline? Right? How much of that carbon emission is credited to us? How much is credited to the airline? How much is credited to the, to the, the passenger who's sitting on the plane? Right? And you could count it three times, but then, then you're not getting the, 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 the accurate picture either. Yeah, I think there's some, some rule setting and some, some standard setting that we have to go through. We're extremely heavily involved in this. We're, we're working very closely with Imperial College in the UK. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've, created, uh, we, we've put out a white paper uh, over two years ago now to, to, get, to set out a straw man. This is how we think about measuring impact. If they're not perfect. Please you know, criticize, compliment, uh, build on. And, and, but let's, let's, at the end of the day, agree on a language that we can all speak that will allow us to, to track uh, honor and, and then act on these commitments. The social and the environmental have become extremely closely intertwined now. Uh, we see the results of environmental uh, changes uh, reflected in migration, uh, increased poverty through desertification, flooding, and, and so on, and, um, uh, and, and so forth. And, and for me, Bill, I don't know if you agree with this, but for me, it's about measuring the total impact of companies, uh, measuring their environmental impact, measuring their employment impact, uh, uh, measuring their uh, product impact on people and, and planet and their operational impact on people and planet. And by next year, we will have a framework for measuring all of these impacts so that a company cannot say, um, I'm delivering 150% of 140% of sales in environmental damage, but look at all the good I'm doing on the employment side. You can say, well, we're measuring the good you're doing on the employment side, and you're still heavily net impact. Um, so I, I think our efforts should go now to getting transparency on the total impact of companies. Now, when you do that, it has very severe implications as an article which appeared in, in Harvard Business Review just uh, three uh, weeks ago, which I, I, I was uh, privileged to co-author shows. The first thing is you open the door to government actually being able to tax directly those who are polluting the most. So if I, if I, if I say um, uh, to you uh, that uh, there are 250 companies that are delivering more environmental damage than profit, and that actually there are 600 companies nearly out of the 1,800 that are delivering environmental damage equivalent to 25% of their, of their profit. The government would have the option, instead of taxing us all to remedy the damage caused by some companies, to tax companies directly. The second thing is we already see a correlation in the stock market within certain sectors between high pollution and lower company valuations. So the 30 trillion of ESG money has already started to do its job. If we have transparency on environmental impact, but also on, 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 on social impact, the measuring uh, factors like uh, diversity, gender equality, pay parity, uh, and so on, which we are capable of doing. And, and I mean, as Bill knows, it's taken us nine decades to perfect our financial accounting system. It's going to take us several decades to perfect our impact accounting system. But if we get started on it, we begin to change uh, the way in which even government and, and taxation uh, uh, can help us to achieve the goals that we all share. I think that is a fantastic aspiration, and it's, it's perfectly consistent with the way that we look at our business. Uh, so... We were, we were one of the original sponsors of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we look at all 19 of them and, and try to measure ourselves against those. We recognize that there are some that, from our perspective, will be much more important than others. Not because they're more important to the world, but because we can influence them to a greater degree. So given where we operate, Standard Chartered Bank, most of our operations in and around uh, Asia, Middle East, and Africa, uh, 
i.e. The, the biggest polluting economies in the world, and, and certainly increasingly so if nothing changes, uh, the, the opportunity to address the sustainability challenges is sort of top of the heap. Uh, but, uh, but financial inclusion is, an, is another you know, key element. Uh, access to, to, to clean water, good education. I mean, these are other sustainable development goals, which are very, very near and dear to our hearts and the operations in, in, the, uh, in the communities in which we operate. So uh, I think we're, we're, we're very much in line with taking a, a holistic uh, view of sustainability. That all said, uh, the, uh, as, as you say, to have a, a, a fundamental shift in the way that, that companies assess the, the value that they're creating or the damage that they're, that they're introducing will take significant time. And there is some really heavy lifting to do what, what you're describing. Uh, climate change, I think we have some momentum around uh, right now. So that, that, one, that one of those 19 sustainable development goals, uh, which is in and around climate change, I think we can do some concrete things right now uh, because we've got the, we, we see the evidence today of, of the impact of inaction over the past several years and we have an opportunity to act and, and uh, there will be many ways to skin the cat, uh, but, but one of those is to create a really strong and robust uh, voluntary carbon market that will allow companies to put their money where their mouth is. But big crises require big steps and it's not a coincidence that the generally accepted accounting principles came in after the crash of 29. So we have the opportunity today, if we want to have a new New Deal, uh, we have the opportunity to say, look, the new New Deal is to bring companies to deal fairly with people and planet uh, and, and to solve our, our, our problems, not just uh, through government, but by harnessing the innovation, the capital that investors invest in companies and so on and so forth. To do so. We're not going to solve the problem of diversity either if we don't get companies to act. And we're not going to get companies to act, in my view, uh, unless we transparently measure the diversity and compare it with their competitors and find investors saying, I'm going to measure both your profit performance and your impact performance. So it seems to me that while we have to continue with all the efforts that, uh, that Bill and Mark and uh, others are, are, are making to achieve a milestone in the environmental area, at the same time, to seize the opportunity to say, you know what, we have the tools to have transparency on environmental as well as social. Uh, that's what $30 trillion worth of investing is asking for. And it's not all environmental, it's also social. So. Governments should mandate it. And we can do both. They're not mutually excluded. So given the, the uh, growing interest and uh, uh, volumes of um, investment directed towards uh, ESG, environmental, social and governance principles, without transparency, is there a risk of creating a bubble? Yeah, and I think that would be a big area of focus for the task force, is addressing uh, any questions that remain around the, the, the quality of offset credits that have been established, the... There's a number of different uh, rating agencies that take somewhat different or, or quite different approaches to validating projects. Uh, there's a uh, in the, the, we need to, to build the confidence that the that the companies that are spending real money to buy carbon credits are confident that 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 money is being used for exactly the purpose that that, that, that was advertised, and that it's only being counted once. So uh, you know, I think that the a, a large proportion of the of the transactions that are happening today are perfectly legitimate, but it only takes a couple to undermine the confidence in, in the whole system. But what we need to do to get to, 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 to limit ourselves to a one and a half degree increase is probably a 15 times increase relative to where we are today. We need to take 23 gigatons of carbon out of the, out of the atmosphere. Uh, that's just massive. So the incremental changes to the fine tuning that, uh, that we've been doing for the past few years, uh, one, it's far from enough, uh, and, and two, uh, it, it's it's completely inadequate in any case. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was not impactful. So uh, the opportunity here is, is to, to get the standard setters, uh, the buyers, the sellers, and the intermediaries together and just hammer out uh, some, some foundations for, for a system, ideally a global system, although we fully recognize that there may be some regional differences because governments are taking a different approach in, in, in different regions. European trading system versus the California exchange versus what China is doing. To the extent that the voluntary market can try to cut through that, yeah. let companies spend the money that they are, are willing to spend 
uh, and let uh, the, the money flow into the pockets of the people that can make a real difference to our, our climate commitments. That seems like a good thing. I think something else is going on. You refer to a bubble, so I, I sort of answer your question. Uh, there's no doubt that it has become mainstream now to talk about impact. But as you know, as Bill uh, you know points out, uh, it's easy to get this the whole field to get discredited uh, because of impact washing and people making claims that are really uh, unjustified. Uh, and often uh, difficult to uh, to verify. I think what has changed is that consumer and employment preferences have changed, particularly those of young people. Those have made investors aware of the implications for their portfolios, and some investors are moved by the same sentiment uh, that uh, they have to help bring solutions rather than create problems. We have a self-defeating system today where companies in their pursuit of profit neglect the environmental and social damage that they create. And governments then tax all of us to try to remedy that damage. And governments can't possibly tax us enough to remedy it, as we can all, as we can all see. So we need to change our system. We need to change our system by bringing, as I say in my, in my book, uh, Impact, Reshaping uh, Capitalism to Drive Real Change. We need to bring impact alongside profit at the center of our economic system, which means that investors and employees and consumers value companies according to both their profit and their impact performance. And technology today enables us to do that. And so if we want to improve uh, the climate uh, performance, reduce the environmental damage uh, of companies, but also encourage other companies to take CO2 out of the atmosphere and, 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 and other emissions out of, um, of the atmosphere, we need to change the system. No amount of exhortation, in my view, is going to do it. And so we have popular support uh, for uh, impactful uh, investment and impactful entrepreneurship and, and big businesses. Some of them uh, are, are receptive to the idea, but most of them are not. Most of them do not want to have the transparency that we are talking about. And so I come to it again by saying if we need a, a, which we do, uh, a better way of emerging from COVID uh, and creating a fairer and, and uh, more sustainable world, then we have to bring uh, the change uh, that uh, impact transparency uh, would bring in the way our whole system delivers solutions rather than problems. So voluntary commitments, of course, are welcome, but perhaps we are at a stage now where we need a little bit more Voluntary is the only choice we have. So I'm as realistic as Bill about the fact that we can't just wait for governments to do things. Voluntary is all we've got, uh, you know, and we've got to, um, to go uh, with it. We will need a carbon market anyway for the transition. Um, not every company is going to be able to get its act together and reduce its emissions. There's a single company in the data set, delivering nearly $200 billion of environmental damage in one year, every year. Uh, it's a Spanish company in the utility, uh, in electricity generation. Uh, so when, when they're not going to be able to change their model. And so let them contribute through the carbon market to solving uh, or compensating for uh, the damage uh, that they are causing. That's why I really don't think Bill and I are um, are disagreeing. Uh, we need both. And the question is, does COVID-19 today create an environment for governments to mandate, as they did in 1933, the US government did, generally accepted accounting principles for impact this time? So that's an important question. And hopefully we, we helped a little bit with the uh, this uh, sadly only to brief discussion. But that's all we have time for, so I can uh, now just uh, thank so much um, Ronnie, uh, Sir Ronald Cohen and Bill Winters for 
uh, for their contribution and sharing their thoughts with us. Thank you again so much. Thank you very much. Bill, look forward to working together on this. Likewise. Bye. Thank you, Sylvia.